Salutations, spooks, spirits, and specters, and welcome back to more Senran Kagura Burst Renewal. Gonna wrap up chapter four. <laughs> Path of the Shinobi. Never thought we'd have to invade our own school, but no matter who we're up against, don't hold back. Shinobi never do. <laughs> Haruka stands in the empty spot Hibari had just disappeared from. Her back is turned, and her head is bowed. I pat on her shoulder. Her eyes are bright, but I can still see tears welling up. Yagyu's parting words had hit the mark. Soon enough. What did she have in mind, exactly? A sudden breeze blows up from the mine, forcing us to shield our eyes from the dust. After the wind dies down, Master Suzune appears out of nowhere. Her expression is unusually grim. <laughs> Haruka and I are both speechless. Asuka and her friends are about as strong as we are. I can admit that. But Habijo has a lot more students than just us. How could five people take the whole school? I gasp at Master Suzune's words. If they used the scroll, that would mean... I bite my lip. I don't know who at Hanzo cooked up their plan, but it's a nasty one. Our eyes lock onto Master Suzune. Relinquish the castle? There's got to be more to it than that. If we bring them Hanzo's scroll, they'll have both super secret ninja art scrolls. It's inevitable that we'll wind up fighting over them. Not to mention, we won't be able to avoid fighting all the crazed Hebijo students while we're at it. Master Suzune produces the Hanzo scroll from her cleavage. She doesn't bother to hide her concern. I don't blame her. We have to fight our friends all the way to the castle keep, then fight the Hanzo students for the super secret ninja art scrolls. There is a good chance at least one of us is about to die. We each walk away from the mine in silence. It's up to me what to do with these next five hours. But honestly, I've got nowhere else to go. I don't have a home I can go back to, or anyone to talk to, really. All I want to do, in the moment, is kill time. So I walk down to the shop's district. It's bustling with patrons right now. I slip into the crowd, my mind a whirl. I strive for power. That's my path of the shinobi. 
and it's never wavered, not since I first joined Hebijo. But the time I've spent among classmates, among friends, has changed something inside of me. Maybe that's why I've been at odds with Haruka. Once you start caring about your friends, you start fearing the, lo the thought of losing them. Fear inevitably leads to weakness. And what good is a weak shinobi? Maybe that's why I've been so stubborn about keeping my friends at a distance. And now Haruka's taught me something. Friendship and strength are both important. It's true. I want to be the kind of person who cares about both equally. And when I think about that, I remember. Asuka said the same thing to me. So, then, what's the real difference between good and evil, Shinobi? What are we even fighting for? Killing each other just because we have different bosses? It's so meaningless. If I'm going to fight them, I need a better reason than that. Here we are, right before the big showdown, and my thoughts are a goddamn mess. I turn toward the voice and see an old man standing there. It's the legendary shinobi we saw at the hot springs, Hanzo. He brings his hands together and bows his head. I don't have time for some rambling old pervert. I turn back around to leave. With that, he nudges my back. He deceptively, he's deceptively strong for an old man. I wouldn't be able to fight him if I tried. He prods me along for a bit, and eventually pushes me into a sushi restaurant. There are no other customers around. It must not be a very popular place. He puts me in a seat at the counter. He walks to the other side of the counter and washes his hands carefully. In a fashion entirely unbecoming of a legendary shinobi, Hanzo's face splits into a cheerful grin. As he works on the sushi, I find myself staring at his hands. He certainly moves like a shinobi, with not a single movement wasted. Maybe a top-notch shinobi skills are peerless in any situation. It's obvious what he's talking about. The Hanzo occupation of Hebijo. Ah, I'm blunt about it, but Hanzo doesn't seem to react at all. 
He gives me an arrangement of seasonal fish. I can see how fresh they are. Then he sets up another plate just like it, putting it next to mine. There are still no other people around. I almost start to think it's for him when... Asuka bursts into the restaurant. I stand up. Asuka drops into a defensive stance. My shoulders feel heavy for some reason. Then I realize Hanzo puts his put his hands on them. I have no choice but to drop back into my seat. Despite her pouting, she sits down. Looks like even she won't dare defy him. So that second dish is for her. She gives me a fleeting glance, then takes a bite. She and her friends just seized my home, and here I am, eating sushi with her. What a sight we must be. She frowns and looks down. She sets down her chopsticks and sighs. She looks troubled right down to her core. Looks like she and I are both lost in the fog again. I say the first words that pop into my head. She murmurs in response. We sit in silence, almost like we're having some kind of sushi-themed vigil. Hanzo speaks while pouring tea. We both turn to him without thinking. He has our undivided attention as we wait to see what he says next. Hanzo places a cup of steaming tea in front of each of us. At her interruption, Hanzo breaks into a smile. I've been sipping my tea the whole time he's been talking. The steam in my cup looks like a lake when the sun burns the fog away. Asuka. 
Asuka goes wide-eyed as I address her. Hanzo gives a slight nod at our exchange. Coming here was the right thing to do. Or rather, if I hadn't come here, I don't think I would have known the right thing to do. As I leave my seat, Hanzo bows deeply. I don't answer. I just walk out. When I get outside, I look around and see that the sun has gone all the way down. I walk all the way back to the mine, where I hear a very flustered sounding voice. It's Yami. And she's there with Hikage, Mirai, and Haruka. Everyone's gathered together around a lit fire pit. As soon as she sees me, Yami rushes over with a pot. It's full of disgusting brown slop. A closer look reveals bits of red and black grass. She scoops some into her ladle and moves it toward me. Mirai and Haruka burst into laughter at my panic. Hikage's as expressionless as ever, while Yami puffs out her cheeks at me. I feel oddly content. When my friends are around, my heart feels warm. We're all kind of like stray cats. Betrayed, abandoned, left to live on our own. But it's different now. We have friends. We may not be blood related, but we're still family. The moon shines down on us. It's almost time. Master Suzune stands up. We run over to her. She looks even more intense than usual. As they finish their goodbyes, they gather around me. Unprompted, we form a circle. I reach a hand into the center of the circle. They each put a hand on top of mine. We lift our hands and look up at the night sky. The moon casts a gentle glow over all of us. The curtain is about to rise on the final battle. この
するのどうしたらいいの覚悟は決めたはずだ私たちはここで止まるわけにはいかない<笑>未来手加減はせず全力で戦えそれが同じ悪人たちへの礼儀だ分かったよホムラよし行くぞ Time to fight. I don't think I didn't notice this pack meal over here. Boxes, huh? Nope. All right, that's it. Here shows me nothing. Really? 
Thank you. Thank you. ちょっと待っている暇はないぞ。後悔はするな。お前が悔いていたら切られた者たちが浮かばれん。学校と超秘伝忍法書を奪い返すこと。それが切った者たちに対して報いることになる。そうだね。分かったよ。よし。では行くぞ。蛇城の城はもうすぐそこだ。うん。どう？私も結構やるでしょ。the power of our bond all right we'll be doing a uh, chapter five next time so until then thank you all very much for watching and ciao for now ciao for now